Well, Merry Christmas. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. My name's Seth. I'm one of the pastors. If we haven't met yet, you picked a great time to be here. We're so glad you're here with us. For those of you joining us online, thank you for being a part of our church family tonight as we celebrate this special night. Uh, the Christmas chaos is about to come to an end, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> somebody's excited. Yes, all right. The train's pulling into the station. How many of you guys are ready for that? Yeah, anybody not ready for... Christmas yet? Uh, you just got a little bit of time left, yeah? Kids, hey, uh, thanks for being here tonight. All you kids, you did a great job with your singing. Thank you for that. We love hearing you sing. Yeah. <clears throat> How many of you kids are going to be wonderful children and let your parents sleep in tomorrow morning? And yeah. You know what? Those of you who raise your hand, the rest of you be quiet. Those of you who, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Those of you who raise your hand, you're going to get everything you ask for because you're like the most wonderful children. How many of you are going to go like wake your kids, parents up really early, jump on their bed and be really annoying? And I see my own child's hand up and <laughs> you're getting coal. Noel and Madeline, you're both getting coal. That's no fun. I'm just kidding. Oh my goodness, man. The, the chaos, right? I mean, this season is just so busy. It's so chaotic. Uh, and we're just going to do something a little bit different tonight. Um, I want to invite you to do something that maybe you haven't done for a while just because of the season, maybe just the culture that we live in. And we're just running crazy all the time. So we're just going to take a couple minutes together to just slow down and pause and think about what it is that we get to celebrate tomorrow with Christmas. It's such a beautiful season, right? I mean, with the lights, the songs, the music, uh, the food, the, the connections with people. I mean, it's just such a beautiful season. And man, it just flies by so fast. I remember as a kid uh, just longing for Christmas to come and it felt like I was waiting, 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 waiting and never get here. Um, and then as an adult, it's like you just blink and it, like in a matter of seconds from the time you put the tree up to the time you put it away a month later or however long it is you have it out, it just, it just flies. And so for just a couple minutes, I want to do something that's very unusual in our world, and let's just slow down, and let's just be peaceful for a couple minutes and reflect on the miracle that we celebrate. I don't know if you've spent a lot of time thinking about how different the world is because of what we celebrate at Christmas. I mean, can you imagine a world without Christmas? And I'm not just talking about no Christmas carols or, you know, no nativity and all that stuff. But I mean, think about 2,000 years ago before Jesus came, what the world was like. I was reflecting on that just as I was uh, just planning for this whole series. We've been talking about the king and, and Jesus coming to be the king and how he stepped into this world of total chaos in a world where everyone's fighting to be on top, everyone's fighting to be in control, everyone's you know, looking out for number one. It was believed that some people should be owned by other people, that, that that was a good thing for them. There was no value in those who were the underdogs. And it was into that world 2,000 years ago that Jesus came. And he came as someone who was so very different. I mean, imagine a world where there was no value in loving one another. Imagine a world where there's no value in looking out for the needs of one another. The word that I think about when I think about that world is dark. Dark and weary and broken and seemingly hopeless. And it was into that that Jesus came, and we've been talking about is he came as somebody who was so unlike every other king. Every other king fought to be king of the hill. Jesus came to give his life so that we could have ours. The Apostle Paul was writing to a group of Christians, and he said, uh, he, he summed up Jesus' life. Perhaps you've heard this before, but here's what he said in Philippians chapter 2. And he was challenging Christians to have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, the followers. He's, our, he's the one that we look to as our leader. He says, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. And here was his mindset. Who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to use to his own advantage. He wasn't looking out for himself. He says, rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. 
Paul continues, says, therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. He's crowned as king, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. He was first, but he made himself last. He sacrificed himself for us so that we could be elevated. And as a church, we talk so much about God's incredible story. Well, this part of God's story began unfolding about 2,000 years ago in the birth that we celebrate at Christmas. Luke uh, recorded the birth story for us. Luke was an historian, and he went around, or a doctor, rather, who wanted to be an historian. He went around investigating about Jesus' life and asking people. And his account of Jesus' life included eyewitness testimonies and, and likely Jesus' own family tell the story of his birth. Here's what Luke tells us in Luke chapter 2, verse 1. He said, In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace. A world that didn't know peace. He says, On earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary, Mary, Jesus' mother, Mary, who was cradling this little baby, Mary treasured up all these things, the announcement from the angel, the pulling back of the veil of heaven, the recognition that the world was changing, the message of the Savior, a king, hope for all people. She treasured all these things, and Luke tells us that she pondered them in her heart. 2,000 years ago, in this dark, weary world, was the birth of a Savior. And as Mary experienced this, she treasured those moments, recognizing that something different was happening in the world, recognizing that something was going to change, but I have to believe she probably had no idea the significance of the birth of that king. She had no idea that 2,000 years later, the man who would give his life for the sins of all people, the one who would not fight to be on top, would end up influencing the entire world. Not just the Roman world, but the next 2,000 plus years. And here we are today, in these moments, with the privilege of celebrating the birth of this baby. I want to encourage you in the next day or so to just find a few moments of quiet and just reflect on how different our world is. I I am so thankful. I am so thankful I get to live after 2,000 years of influence of Jesus and those who are followers of Jesus. And yes, Christians have been imperfect in their following, and there are times when we fall short, but the world is a better place. 
the world is a very different place when we elevate the lives of others as Jesus elevated us. How in his weakness, he showed incredible strength. How in his love, he sacrificed for us. And how his life was truly a light for the entire world. Kids, I want to encourage you, find your parents and take a few moments with your parents, your mom and dad or whomever, grandparents, and just take a minute and pray to God and say, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done, for all that you've done for us, for the way our world is so different. Thank you that we have the privilege of living in a world that's influenced by your life. And the good news is that no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter what kind of chaos you've created in your world, no matter how much you've tried to control things and they've fallen apart, there is a king who came to give his life for you and who wants to welcome you as part of his kingdom. And today could be your day. I mean, this could be your year, your opportunity to surrender your life to him, the one who didn't fight for control but ended up in control in the end. Jesus at one point in time said, come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. What a great invitation for every one of us in the midst of the chaos of our world to find a point of gratitude, to find a point of joy and hope and love and peace and rest in the birth we celebrate tonight. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, thank you for the incredible gift of Christmas. Thank you for the world that is so vastly different 2,000 years later. I am so grateful. We are so grateful that we did not live in the Roman Empire. The gift of life that you have offered to every one of us. Father, I pray for those who haven't received that, that they might be inspired to do so, that they would turn to you and you would respond to them. Thank you for the way you demonstrated your love, how you went first by giving your life for us, for inviting us into a relationship with you. Thank you for the gift that that is. Thank you, Father, for Christmas when we celebrate the birth of the King. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.